Hello everyone, it's Glenda and welcome back to my channel, Creative Grandma. Today's crochet tutorial, I'll be showing you how to make this fall splendor throw. Now this video is sponsored by Lion Brand Yarns. So here is an up close look at the blanket we're making today. Now this blanket consists of three panels worked in this beautiful pearl color and then we're going to come back and i'm going to show you how to cross stitch your flowers onto the panel then you put a border on each panel we're going to join them together to form the blanket and then put an outside border onto the blanket now what's so fascinating is once you learn how to do the regular basic tunisian stitch the design possibilities are endless you can use any cross stitch chart and cross stitch a design onto anything that has the basic Tunisian stitch. You can make it in panels, you can make one large afghan and do a chart on top of that blanket. So many possibilities. So again, this video is sponsored by Lion Brand Yarns. I want to give a special shout out to Lion Brands for sponsoring this video. So let me tell you everything you're going to need to make this blanket today. This blanket was made using the Lion Brand Homespun Yarn. It comes in a 6 ounce, 170 gram, 185 yards, 169 meters. It's 98% acrylic, 2% other fibers. It's classified as a number 5 bulky weight yarn. And best of all, it's machine washable and dryable. So you're going to need one skein of the color Forest, color 790604. 4B, five skeins of the color pearls, color 790412A, two skeins of color wildfire, color number 790408B, one skein of the color golden, color 790394, and I used up all my red but this little bit. You're going to need two skeins of candy apple. This is color 790375. You're also going to need a long afghan crochet hook. Now this is only 24 stitches across so you probably could get away with the 10 inch afghan hook if you have it. So you need a size L11 or 8 millimeter afghan hook. You're also going to need a regular standard size crochet hook in the size K 10 and a half or 6.5 millimeter. And you're also going to need a yarn needle for cross stitching and weaving in your ends. Now the one thing I did forget to mention was the size of the blanket. Now this blanket measures 42 inches across by 53 inches long. Now it is possible to make this blanket larger. You can just add another panel or two depending on how large you want to make it. And when you increase the size, you'll probably want to increase the length. So when you increase the length, you want to make sure that you leave enough room for another repeat of the flower. It goes from the stem and then one row above. And you'll be seeing this cross stitch chart in the description box underneath the video. So that is how you increase the length is just doing a repeat of one more section. So let me tell you one more time what you need one skein of forest, five skeins of pearl, two skeins of wildfire, one skein of golden, two skeins of candy apple, an afghan hook size L11 or 8 millimeter, a regular crochet hook size 10 and a half K or 6.5 millimeter, and a yarn needle. So grab your yarn and let's get our project started. To begin our project, I am starting with the Lion Brand Homespun in the color Pearls, color 412A. So I already have my yarn attached to my hook and I just used a double knot. You can use whichever method you prefer to join your yarn to your hook. Now this video, we're doing the regular simple Tunisian stitch. So you want to have an afghan hook. Now I'm using a long 14 inch one. You can get away with a 10 inch one if you have a 10 inch hook. And I'm using size L11 or 8 millimeter hook. Now I want to remind everyone all my crochet tutorials are filmed using USA crochet terms. To begin, we're going to chain 24. You're going to yarn over, pull through, and that creates your first chain. That's one. 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, and twenty-four. So for this blanket, we're just making panels. Now it's up to you how you want to do your first row. You can insert your hook into the top loop of the chain. Now I'm going to insert into the back loop. There's three loops on the back of the chain. I'm going right through the center loop. And when you're putting your panels together and working your border, it helps you see your stitches better. So it's all up to you of how you want to do that first row. So the loop on our hook is going to count as our first stitch. So we're going to skip the first chain. I'm going to insert into the second chain. Now I know the homespun has that little bit of a rough look to it. You're going to turn your chain over. You're going to see three loops, one, two, three. You just want to go underneath that center loop. You're going to yarn over and pull through. You're going to keep your loop on your hook. You're going to go to your next chain, flip your chain over. You're going to see that center strand, one, two, three. Insert right underneath that center strand of yarn. Yarn over and pull through. Keep your loop on your hook. And we're just going to continue working across in the same manner. Go to the next chain, flip your chain over. You're going to see one, two, three loops. Insert underneath that center loop, yarn over, and pull through. Go to your next chain, flip your chain over. You're going to see one, two, three. Insert under that center loop, yarn over, and pull through. So let's do it one more time together. Go to your next chain, flip your chain over. You're going to see three loops. One, two, three. The center one sticks up a little bit. Insert underneath that center strand of yarn. Yarn over and pull through. So go ahead and continue. If you need additional help, just click back on the video. Work across to the last chain and I'll meet you there. I'm over at the last chain. Sometimes the last chain is a little bit harder because you have that knot where you started your chain. You just flip that over and sometimes what I do is I find that center loop, insert all the way through and then come back and just grab it with the hook and grab that center strand. Yarn over and pull through. So when you're doing Tunisian crochet, you're going to have your forward pass where you put all your loops on your hook, and then you're going to have your return pass of taking all the loops off. This is such a fun stitch to do. You're going to yarn over and pull through one loop only, and you always do your return pass in the same manner. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through two loops. Yarn over and pull through two loops. Yarn over and pull through two loops. And we're going to continue yarn over and pull through two loops until you have one loop remaining on your hook. So I'm just going to work across to the end of the row. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over, pull through two loops. And we're just going to work across. Now, I did forget to mention when you get to the end of the row, you should have had a total of 24 loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over, pull through two loops. And continue until you have one loop remaining on your hook. So when you get to the end of the row, you're going to see you have two loops at the end. You're going to yarn over and pull through all two loops on your hook. You have one loop remaining, and this loop counts as your first stitch of the next row. So now row two will be our repeat row. And what I like about the Tunisian 
regular simple stitch is even though you're using a yarn that might be a little textured, it's still very easy to see your stitches. We're going to work our forward pass and when you work your forward pass, you're going to look for the vertical stitches that run up and down. When you look at your work and then a vertical stitch, you have those two strands of vertical stitch, two strands of vertical stitch. We're working in these up and down vertical stitches only. So let's go ahead and begin row two. Again, the loop on your hook counts as the first stitch. You're going to insert under the next vertical stitch and you're just going under that one strand of yarn. You're going to yarn over and pull through. You're going to keep that loop on your hook. You're going to go to the next vertical stitch. You can see it runs up and down. Insert just under that one strand of yarn. Yarn over and pull through. You have three loops on your hook and we're keeping all of our loops on the hook. Go to your next vertical stitch. Insert underneath that stitch just that one strand only. Yarn over and pull through. Keeping the loop on your hook. Go to your next vertical stitch, insert under that one strand only, yarn over and pull through, keeping that loop on the hook. I'll show you one more time. Go to your next vertical stitch, it runs up and down, insert underneath that stitch under one strand only, yarn over and pull through. And you keep your loops on your hook. So go ahead and continue and work in each stitch across, keeping your loops on the hook and when you get to the end of the row, you're going to have 24 loops on your hook. I'll meet you at the end of the forward pass. I'm over at the end of the forward pass. We have our end stitch to work. Now when you work the end stitch, you're going to notice you have your vertical stitch and right underneath the vertical stitch, you're going to see another stitch. It's a little harder to see with this yarn. You're going to insert under the end vertical stitch and then you want to come right to the back and grab the stitch right below this vertical stitch, right behind it on the side. You want to have two loops on the side, yarn over and pull through all two loops on your hook. And this just helps make it look the same on all four sides when we do our panel. So when you do your border, you're going to see the top of those stitches. Little hard to see because we're only on row two here. So now when you look at your work, you're going to have a total of 24 loops. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. So now we're ready to do our return pass. You're going to yarn over, pull through one loop only, and then you start yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over, pull through two loops yarn over and pull through two loops. And we're just going to yarn over and pull through two loops until one loop remains on our hook. Now with this stitch, there's no rush. Take your time, do it slow. It's not a race. It's better to just keep your gauge a constant gauge and work at your own pace. Yarn over, pull through two loops, and continue until you have one loop remaining on your hook. And then at the end, you're going to yarn over, pull through the last two loops, and you end up with one loop on your hook, which counts as the first stitch of the next row. So now for this pattern, we're just going to repeat row two. So to begin row three, we're going to repeat row two. The loop on your hook is the first stitch of the row. Go to your next vertical stitch, insert underneath that stitch going through one strand only, yarn over, pull through, and keep the loop on your hook. Go to your next vertical stitch, insert underneath that stitch going under one loop only, yarn over, and pull through. And you're keeping your loops on your hook. Go to your next vertical stitch, insert underneath that stitch going just underneath that top strand of yarn only, yarn over, and pull through. Keeping your loops on the hook. Go to your next vertical stitch, 
insert underneath that stitch going through the top strand only, yarn over and pull through, keeping your loop on the hook. So go ahead and continue and work to the end of the row until you have one stitch remaining and I'll meet you there. I'm over at the end of row three. We're working on our forward pass and we have one stitch remaining. We're over at the edge of our work. So to work the end of the forward pass, you're going to see you have this loop here, that top loop. And if you look, you're going to see one right underneath it. So the top loop and then that bottom loop, you're going to insert into the top loop and then grab the loop below so you have two loops and then yarn over and pull through two loops on your hook. And again, it just creates a nice edging stitch. So now we're ready to do our return pass. You're going to yarn over, pull through one loop only. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through two loops. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Continue and yarn over and pull through two loops until you have one loop remaining on your hook. So I'm just going to work across. Again, take your time if this is the first time you've ever done the Tunisian Simple Stitch. Very easy stitch and I think once you learn this stitch, you're going to love it. So we're almost to the end. And when you get to the last two loops, you're going to yarn over, pull through those two loops, and you have one loop remaining on your hook. So to continue working on your panel, you're going to repeat row two over and over until you have a total of 124 rows. So if you need additional help, just click back on the video. So again, continue and repeat row two until you have a total of 124 rows. I'll meet you at the end of row 124. I'm over at the end of row 124. This is what your work should look like. Now, when you look at this yarn, you can see it gradually changes colors. They're like little blocks of colors. And I mark every 50 rows to make it easier when I count. When I get to row 50, I just put a piece of yarn in. Then when I get to row 100, I put my yarn in. And it just makes it easier to count. So this is the bottom of our panel. And then we just worked 124 rows. So now we're going to do one more row. To begin row 125, again, the loop on your hook counts as the first stitch. You're going to go to your next vertical stitch. You're going to insert underneath that one top strand. You're going to yarn over. You're going to pull underneath and around that stitch and right through the loop on your hook. And then you can see the top of the stitch. So you are losing one stitch when you bind off this way. So go to your next stitch, insert underneath the vertical strand, yarn over, pull through that stitch, and pull through the loop on your hook. And you can see how you can see the top of the stitches. Makes it so much easier to do the border. Insert into the next vertical stitch under that top strand only, yarn over, pull through that stitch, and pull through the loop on your hook. Go to your next vertical stitch, Insert underneath that top strand only, yarn over, pull through that stitch, and pull through the loop on your hook. Let's do it one more time together. Go to your next vertical stitch, insert underneath the top strand only, yarn over, pull through that stitch, and pull through the loop on your hook. So go ahead and continue and work across to the very last stitch, and I'll meet you there. I'm over at the very last stitch of row 125. Look for your vertical strand. You're going to insert under that top strand. Grab the strand right below so you have two strands. Yarn over, pull through those two strands, and pull through the loop on your hook. So our panel is finished, so we're going to fasten off. I chain two. 
Pull my hook up, yarn out, grab, pinch, and pull down. So make sure before you fasten off, I should have said this before I fastened off, that you do a double row count. Make sure you have 124 rows before you do row 125 binding off those stitches. So now we're ready to learn how to cross stitch our pattern onto our Tunisian simple stitch. And the reason people like this stitch for the cross stitch is because you use the vertical stitches as a grid to put your pattern on. We work all of our stitches in one direction from left to right across the stitch. You come down underneath these two loops and then you come up across the next stitch, come down through these two loops, across the next stitch depending on how many cross stitches of each color you have to do. It may be just one stitch. It may be 10 stitches. When you get over to the stitch, the last stitch on the chart, then you're just going to come back over in the opposite direction, going from right to left, underneath, right to left, underneath, and then right to left. And we're only working under these two strands of yarn here so the design does not show on the back of your work. And I'll get into more detail and we'll go in depth of actually cross stitching the design onto the panel. I just wanted to have a little bit of knowledge of what we're doing before we begin. So let's go ahead and begin cross stitching our flower onto our panel. So now we're getting ready to start cross stitching our design onto our panel and you want to start at the last row. So you're going to work from the last row back down to the starting row. So to work your cross stitch onto the panel, you follow a chart, a graft, and each one of these blocks is a vertical stitch. So when you look at the chart, you have 24 stitches across your work and that includes your edge stitches. So the edge stitch is the first block, the next stitch is the next block, and so on, and the last stitch, which is the edge stitch, is the last block on the chart. So right away, I know there's five rows here. So one, two, three, four, five. We're going to start in the sixth stitch. If you want to write that down, you can six stitch down from the top. And then I always work from the right to the left, but it's up to you. So what I do is I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 10, 11. And then I'm going to start in the 11th stitch across. And then it's very easy. Once you start this first stitch, we're going to work two stitches across. Then we're going to work back over, come down, work four stitches, work back across, come down, work four stitches, work back across, come over, we're going to work two stitches, and then we're going to come down underneath these two stitches and then start this. So what I like to do is work from top to bottom, and then I'll do the sides, I do my center, and then when I do the leaves, I start, I work all the way down because it's so much easier. Then I work this section, then this little section, then this section. Then I go back and put my little flowers on the ends of my leaves. So we're starting with that darker brown, the wildfire. So grab your wildfire yarn, grab your yarn needle, and let's begin. And I'll show you how to cross stitch the design onto your blanket. So I have my yarn attached to my yarn needle. Now don't make this too long. I would not make this over like 40, 45 inches. If you make it too long, then your ends are gonna start fraying because of the way the yarn is. So when you see that the yarn is frayed, then I would just clip that end so you have a nice clean edge when you go to start your work. So again, when you look at the chart, I'm just going to put the chart here you want to go up and you're going to count from your edge stitch. So let me zoom up just a little bit. So the edge stitch is one. We want to come over to the 11th stitch. You're going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and 11. So I found the vertical stitches. Now we have to come down to the sixth stitch. So then you're just going to count down one, two, three, four, 
five and six. So this is where we're going to start. So what I do is I look at my chart and I have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten stitches when I count down. So I just bring my hook down several stitches, maybe five, six stitches. You may not have that many stitches. And what I'm doing is I'm going underneath these two loops. And then I'm coming up to where my starting stitch should be. So I'm just going to lay this down now since I have my starting stitch. And then I pull my yarn up slowly. And as you cross stitch, it holds this yarn in place. And I just pull it up so you can't see that end. Then we're going to cross stitch across two stitches. One and two. So you're going to go from left to right over top that vertical stitch. You're going to take your yarn needle from top to bottom and you're just going underneath these two loops right here. You're not going all the way to the back. You just want to put your needle underneath these two loops. And then you're just going to pull that down. And just work these stitches slow. Once you get the hang of it, you can use whichever method or how fast or slow you want to go. So I just make sure that is nice and secure. Now I need to make one more stitch. So I'm going to go across this next vertical stitch. You're going to go from left to right. Take your yarn needle just underneath those two strands of yarn. So now since I have my two stitches made and I do use my fingers and I use the tip of my needle to just make sure they're nice looking cross stitches. So now since I have my two stitches made, I'm going to work back across. I'm going to go from right to left and then I'm just going back underneath those two strands of yarn. And then just pull your yarn slowly. And then I'm going from right to left again and I'm coming underneath those two strands of yarn. Now before I pull that through, I'm going to look at my chart. And then you'll see here I have four stitches. So I need to come over one stitch and down. So what I do is I just take my yarn needle underneath these two loops and then I go underneath that next vertical strand and I bring my needle underneath the two strands of yarn on the left side of the stitch I need to start with. And then I pull my yarn through. And then again, I use my fingers and make sure my stitches are nice and straight. And when you turn that over, you're going to see you're not seeing your stitches. So the next row, we're going to work across four stitches. So again, we're working in one direction until we get all of our stitches made and then we work back across. So again, we need to work across four stitches. So I'm working from left to right, come up to the top, go underneath those two strands of yarn and pull your yarn needle through. Then left to right over the next vertical stitch, taking your yarn needle from top to bottom under those two strands of yarn. Then the next vertical stitch, left to right, and then underneath those two strands of yarn I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way so hopefully you can see what I'm doing. And then left to right over the next vertical stitch and you're going underneath the two loops in between the vertical stitches. And that's four. So since we have our four stitches made, now we need to do our return pass. So you're just going to go from right to left and then up to the top and underneath those same two strands of yarn in between the vertical stitches. And sometimes if I don't see the side of my stitch, I just use my yarn needle and my fingers and I pull that up a little bit, just so you can see a nice cross stitch. Right to left, go underneath those two strands of yarn and we're just working back across. Again, right to left. Now before I pull my needle through the last stitch across, I look at my chart. So the next stitch we need to go into is the one directly below. 
So you're going to take your yarn needle and you're just going to go directly below. You're going underneath those two loops because you always want to start at the bottom left corner when you're starting your stitches. So now the next row, we're going to do four stitches across. So you're going left to right across that vertical stitch and then from top to bottom down through those two loops and we're going to work across four stitches. One, left to right across the next vertical stitch and down between those two loops. That's two, three, and four. And now we're ready to begin our return pass. So you're going to work from right to left, right to left, and then down through those two strands. I'm over the last stitch. So again, I place my needle in there, but then I look at my chart. Now the next brown stitch is I come over to the right one stitch. So when you look at your work, you're going to just take your yarn needle and you're going to go underneath this stitch and you need to come down to the bottom left of the stitch you want to start with. So I'm working under the top two loops. I never put that needle all the way to the back of my work. And again, when you flip it over, you're not seeing your stitches. So now when you look at your chart, you have two stitches, so we're only working across two stitches, left to right across that next vertical stitch going underneath those two loops. That's one. And then left to right over the next vertical stitch. And then you're going to work right to left. I have my two stitches made and now we're going to work back across right to left so now since I'm back over to my last stitch I noticed that I have two yellow stitches here so I'm skipping these two or these four yellow stitches and here's where my last stitch has worked. I'm just going to come down underneath the two loops of the next two stitches and I'm even coming down to the third stitch because the next brown stitch is one, two, three stitches straight down. So I'm going one, two, three and you always start at the bottom left. And I'm just going underneath those two loops. And then when I get my flower made, I come back and I do the center. And it's so much easier to work from top to bottom instead of doing this and trying to come over. It's always best to work from top to bottom, do this section, then come over and do this section, then come over and do this section. So let's go ahead and do the bottom of our flower. You see we have two stitches here, working from left to right, go across that vertical strand underneath the two loops, and then the next stitch left to right, my two stitches are made, so I'm going to do my return going right to left. And then when you look at your chart, we need to come over a stitch because we have four stitches. So you're just going to come over to the next stitch. And again, we always start at the bottom left of the stitch we're starting with. And now we're going to work four stitches across going from left to right. One, two, three, and four. Now we're going to work from right to left and we're working back across the four stitches. One, two, three, and four. Now before you pull the last stitch through, look on your chart. The next stitch is directly below. So we're going to go all the way down to the bottom left corner of that next stitch straight down. 
and we're going to work over four stitches working from left to right one two three and four then we're going to work from right to left across those four stitches one two three and before you pull through your last stitch look at your chart so this is the row we just completed so you'll see the next row you have to come over to the right and down one stitch so before you pull that last stitch through I know I have to come over to this stitch so I just angle my hook I come underneath that stitch on the diagonal I go under the two loops in between the vertical stitches because this is the first stitch I need to work and then I pull my yarn needle through and it's always best to just look before you start your stitch you know your next stitch has to be under the second stitch over and we're going to work two stitches so working from left to right work across two vertical strands of yarn one and two and then from right to left we're going to finish our cross stitches one and before I pull this through I'm going to look at my chart so there is no more stitches down here I do not come all the way down here I'll do this separately so this part of my flower is finished so what I do is I pull my yarn needle down through and then I weave my yarn back up through the stitches so I go under one stitch and it, it doesn't matter how you do it as long as you don't go all the way to the back you're only working under these two strands here so I just go up and then through and this locks and secures your yarn in place and then I'm just going to fasten off so that is how I do the cross stitch for the blanket now if I tried to show you how to do the cross stitch for the whole entire blanket it would be an extremely long video so this at least gives you an idea of the technique I use so now for the center of the flower what I do is I take my yellow you can either come in from the top or the bottom and I take that yellow yarn underneath these brown strands and then I just come down through to the first stitch I'm going to work and it's always better to work from the top down so you would start in this stitch here you would pull your yellow through work across the two stitches come back drop down to the next stitch and do your center then what I do is I start the next petal so when you look at your work use your cross stitches as a guide of where your next stitch goes and always double check it's a lot of work when you get going down through your panel and you make a mistake so up here you're going to see here's the next petal so what I do is here is the two petals of the top petal and I know that I need to work in this stitch this is the last stitch but I need to start at the left side so we're going to come over one two so you can run your stitches up you're going to have four stitches one two three four one two three four so you just come over and you run your stitches up through these stitches until it's within these four stitches your end has to be up here and then you're going to work your cross stitch across two stitches back across angle your hook down to this next stitch and remember you're always starting at the bottom left corner so that is how you cross stitch your flowers onto your panel so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this chart up here so hopefully you can do a screenshot and save this image and you're going to work five flowers down your panel now if you want the PDF file it does show you the five flowers you start with the brown and then you turn that flower so it's in the opposite direction then you go back to the brown so this is the close-up of what you're going to do now there's one row in between each flower that is not worked so you're going to have one row 
and then you just count over, start the next flower. Now with this chart, you're going to have to come all the way up here and see where that first stitch is. Bring it all the way down, follow it down, and then you skip one row and you're going to start down here. So if you want to, if you print this out or you can do a screenshot, you can just take this chart, follow this stitch down all the way, and you know that you have an empty row here, you want to start down here at the next row. So you're going to start underneath this row for this next flower. So go ahead and cross stitch your design onto your panel and then I'll be back and we'll start the border for the panel. So I am done cross stitching my flowers onto my panel. You should have a total of five flowers and we're alternating colors as we go down. So there's one, two, three, four, and five. So now since you have all your flowers cross stitched onto your panel, you want to go back up to the top right hand corner. So this is the end of row 124 and row 125 is where you see the top of the stitches. We're just going over to the top right hand corner. I already have my pearl colored yarn attached to my hook. I'm using the same color as we did for the panel. I'm going to insert under the top two loops of that top right hand corner stitch, yarn over, pull through that stitch and pull through the loop on your hook. I'm going to begin with the chain one. This beginning chain one does not count as a stitch. We're going to work a half double crochet in each stitch across to the next corner. Yarn over, insert back into that very first stitch under the top two loops. Yarn over, pull back through. You have three loops. Yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. That's how you do a half double crochet half double crochet into the next stitch making sure you go under both of those top two loops work your half double crochet half double crochet into the next stitch half double crochet into the next stitch Continue and work one half double crochet in the top of each stitch under the top two loops until you get to the next corner and I'll meet you there. I'm over at my first corner of round one of the border going around our panel. Now you have 24 stitches going across the afghan stitch panel, but when you work across the top, you should only have 23 stitches. As when you did row 25 and took off your loops, you lost a stitch. So again, you should have 23 stitches going across the top of your panel. So now we're going to work our corner. We're going to chain two for the corner. You're going to swing your work around. And now we're going to be working down the length of our panel. And you should see the row end stitches very clearly. You should have two strands of yarn at the end of each row. And if you're not sure, just follow those rows over until you get to the edge of the work. So let's go ahead and begin working down the length of our panel. You're going to yarn over. You're going to insert into that very first row end stitch. Just go down, look for those vertical stitches, follow them over and insert into that first row end stitch. Work a half double crochet. Half double crochet into the next row end stitch. Half double crochet into the next row and stitch. Half double crochet into the next row and stitch and I'm going under both of those loops at the side edge of my panel. So go ahead and continue work one half double crochet in each row and stitch down until you get to the next corner and I'll meet you there. I'm over at my next corner of round one of the border. We worked one half double crochet in each row and stitch down to the next corner. So I just got done working in the last row and stitch. So we're going to chain two to form our corner. And then you're going to swing your panel around. 
and now we're going to start working across the bottom of our panel now if you went into the back loops you're going to see your stitches very clearly here's a stitch here's a stitch here's a stitch and we're working under those top two loops so to begin we're going to work under that very first stitch under the top two loops you're going to yarn over go under the top two loops only work your half double crochet half double crochet into the next stitch going under the top two loops of that stitch half double crochet into the next stitch again going under the top two loops half double crochet into the next stitch and if you're not sure the top of the stitch on the bottom of the blanket is in between the vertical stitches so you're going to see your vertical stitches and then this is the top of that stitch half double crochet into the next stitch so go ahead and continue and work one half double crochet in each stitch across until you get to the next corner and I'll meet you there I'm over at my next corner of round one of the border. We just worked across the bottom of our panel, working one half double crochet into the top of each stitch across. So now we're going to chain two for the corner. You're going to spin your work around. And now we're going to work one half double crochet in each row and stitch down the length. So right here, it's going to look like a row end stitch, but that's not a row end stitch. You want to look for your first vertical stitch row. Just look for where all those vertical stitches are coming down. And this right here is your first row end stitch. Half double crochet into that first row end stitch. Half double crochet into the next row end stitch. Half double crochet into the next row end stitch. Continue and work one half double crochet in each row and stitch down to your next corner and I'll meet you there. I'm over at my last corner. I just worked in my last row and stitch and now we're going to form our corner by chaining two. And then we're going to join by coming up to the top of this first half double crochet stitch. This chain one does not count as a stitch. Come over to your first half double crochet, insert under the top two loops, and slip stitch through that stitch and through the loop on your hook. So I am done with my pearl color, so I'm going to fasten off. I chain two, pull my hook up, yarn out grab, pinch, and pull down. And then you just weave your ends in on the back of your work matching colors. So this is where I'm going to end part one of the video. I was going to do the complete tutorial and one tutorial, but it was getting pretty long. So I thought it would be best. We did quite a bit for one day and then I'll come back with part two and we'll start up with round two of the border on that panel. We'll finish putting the border on the panel. I'll show you how to join those blocks together into the blanket and then I'll show you how to put the outside border on the blanket. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of the crochet fun. And I'll be posting part two in just a couple days. So thank you everybody and until next time, stay inspired and happy crocheting. Bye!